Lyme disease is the topic for this video. And Lyme disease is um, something that um, happens to a lot of people who live in uh, heavily wooded areas. Uh, I try to make these uh, videos um, geographically independent since uh, people from all over the world are watching them. But this is one of those um, uh, conditions that sort of is based in uh, certain geographic regions. So let's talk a little bit about what's happening. You go into the woods and you get bit by a tick. And the, the type of tick that causes uh, uh, Lyme disease has a special name. It's called Exodus, Exodus, whatever the pronunciation is. And there's different types, but this is the main name. Um, and then what happens is this tick then transmits an organism into your body called a spirochete. And the name of the spirochete is Borrelia burgdorferi. And that's important to remember. So don't get confused. The tick's name is the exodus tick and the spirochete, which is the organism that the tick um, essentially introduces into your body. It's called Borrelia burgdorferi. Then what happens is it involves the, the skin because that's where the tick bite occurs. Eventually, this uh, organism, the spirochete, the Borrelia, will uh, enter uh, into your uh, uh, lymphatic system and later will disseminate into your bloodstream. And when that happens, that can cause uh, systemic symptoms. So Lyme disease, essentially, if you have uh, symptoms, there's three types of symptoms. There's They're localized, uh, but they're also uh, characterized by a stage. So you have early localized, you have early disseminated, and then you have late. So early localized, which uh, appear, appears in 75% of patients, is really referring to that rash. And that rash has, a, at the side of the tick bite, has a special name. It's called erythema migrans. And I'll show you a picture of that rash. This is what it looks like. As you can clearly see, the area is a, um, a large area with a center and a periphery resembling a bullseye, if you can kind of see. Um, and it can appear um, most commonly on the thigh or buttock or axilla. In this photo, it's actually on the back. So that's the first uh, initial presentation. Once the organism, that spirochete, disseminates into the bloodstream, you can get uh, systemic symptoms. And those are um, systemic symptoms that include malaise, fatigue, chills, fever, headache, and uh, myalgias and arthralgias, which uh, in layman's terms are muscle pain and joint pain. This uh, will occur about uh, 3 to 32 days after the tick bite, and this is m a few weeks uh, after the tick bite. And then also, in about 15% of uh, patients in the early disseminated phase, you can also get neurologic symptoms like meningitis and Bell's palsy, facial palsy. That's important to remember. All right, now we have the late, the late stage. And this can happen uh, years later uh, if it's not treated, months to years. And what is this uh, late uh, symptomatology? It involves arthritis, severe arthritis commonly affecting the knees. All right, so how do you diagnose this? Well, the diagnosis is really a, a combination of history um, where a person, you know, presents with a rash, with the classic history of uh, exposure to an endemic area, area that's endemic to Lyme disease, uh, history of a tick bite, and um, some of the classic uh, initial symptoms. But then there are some blood tests that are done, and those blood tests are actually given us a very easy to remember name, Lyme titers. And those Lyme titers can come back uh, to be uh, helpful in the diagnosis. And that's really, that's all there is to it, really. Sometimes um, physicians uh, can also do uh, blood cultures. And then also you can do a CSF cultures as well, if you feel it's necessary. And also, since the, the knees are involved, the joints, uh, joints are involved, the joint uh, fluid can be uh, tested, aspirated and tested. But really, the... The history and the, the Lyme titers usually are the, the way to diagnose it. Treatment. 
Well, the treatment of Lyme disease is uh, involving antibiotics, most commonly doxycycline, but they've, uh, there's also amoxicillin and uh, cefriaxone. And then the arthritis is managed with uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. All right, now uh, I'd like to um, show a couple uh, clinical vignettes um, about uh, this uh, disease. A 40-year-old woman vacationing is bitten by a tick. She does not seek medical treatment and eventually develops chronic arthritis of the knee and hip joints and paralysis of the left facial muscles. A physical exam during the early stages of the disorder would most likely have revealed. Well, this is a classic uh, vignette. It's nice that they don't actually mention Lyme disease. It kind of makes you think. But the, the history is pretty classic with the tick and then the arthritis. And my opinion is she probably hasn't gotten treated for ye months to years because the arthritis is actually, as you remember, it's a late um, presentation. So what they're asking you is when she first had it, what would she have had? She would have had that classic rash, which is known as erythema chronica migrans. And finally, we have a epidemiological question. Global eradication of Lyme disease is unlikely because, if you remember, um, there's a tick uh, called Exodus, and it uh, transmits the spirochete, Borrelia burgdorferi. And the tick is uh, acts as a reservoir for that uh, organism. And as a result, because um, um, the tick is uh, um, endemic to certain geographic regions, Borrelia burgdorferi can be maintained in nature forever, pretty much, by this tick. So therefore, A, where it says Borrelia burgdorferi can be maintained in nature indefinitely by a tick vector, is the correct answer.